Hey, welcome to my channel. In this video, we're going to be building an API fuzzer. There are a couple API fuzzers out there right now that you can use, but they don't quite do what I want them to do. So I'm gonna show you how to build your own, and it's really simple. It will take less than 15 minutes to do so. So in the world of API fuzzing, my favorite tool is Fuff, and when we run it, this is the output we get. Looks just like this. And we see docs and API. The reason I love Fuff so much is because look at how fast it goes and how fast it makes those requests. Now we're gonna cancel that. And the tool we're gonna make is going to be called fuzz.py is what I called it. You can call it whatever you want. And when we run this, the output looks a little different. It tells us what word, like the API, it gives us the status code, and then it actually gives us the JSON in response so we can decide if this is worth our time or not to go out to see if there's anything out there or any bugs for us to go check and see if we can find. In order to follow along with this video and understand all of the code we're going to be writing, I would recommend you have a basic understanding and a foundational knowledge of Python. And if you don't have that yet, that's okay. I have a video that's 56 minutes and you can go out and learn all of the concepts and everything you need to know to build this fuzzer. So the link is in the description for that video. And if you have that foundational knowledge of Python, let's go ahead and build this together. But before we do, please take a minute and hit the like button and also subscribe and help keep this channel going. Let's jump into it. When you run into an API endpoint that needs to be tested, and an example of this is one like HTTP dot slash slash, and then we're gonna say 10, 10, 11.161. And when we run this, this is what an API response looks like. And when we hit a valid endpoint, we'll get JSON in return. And so we'll see, we'll see something like this. It tells us that it's JSON and it says that we have another endpoint, which is V1. And we're gonna go through this, but when you hit a page like this and you're testing for an API, there are a lot of fuzzers out there and not very many of these fuzzers work very well for APIs. There is one and it's one that I like. It is called Fuff and it is run like this. And you can, you can fuzz APIs with Fuff and it works really well and it works really fast. So it'll go really quick. You can see how many requests it's sending and how quick and it sends down docs and API. It gives us the status code, but there is one problem. Let's say we're fuzzing an API and there are hundred endpoints and we don't want to go out and check every single one of these endpoints. Instead, we would rather just see this message right here come in underneath of the word that had a response. And so what we're going to do is build a tool like Fuff, only we're going to build ours in Python, and it's going to tell us the word, and then it is going to tell us underneath the response that we are receiving from the server. And it's going to print the response underneath of our word. And we'll go ahead and jump in and start this project. Okay, to write this program, I am going to use my Linux machine because in order to test it, we're going to test it on Hack the Box in this tutorial because I don't really want to be fuzzing somebody's API that is live and have it on camera. So I'm going to be using the box backend from Hack the Box. There's not a lot of API endpoints, but that shouldn't matter for the sake of our program. We're going to write the program in here and we can test it on backend and then if you find a bug bounty program or you have a client that wants you to test an API you can run your fuzzing tool against it and modify it if you need to. Our Python API fuzzer is going to be a lot simpler to run but the module is going to be a little more comprehensive so as we go through this module I'll try to print out what is happening so that you can see what the methods are doing as we go along. So with that, we're going to jump in. You will need to import the module requests. And for me, I already have it on my Kali Linux machine, but you may need to hold your mouse over this. And then right here, it will say install requests and you will hit install. We're also going to want to import system. So we're going to go import sys. And this one should be automatically installed, but if not, you can follow the exact same steps as before. We're gonna start with just trying to get a response from the API that we have running. And we're gonna see if our response is set up. So we're gonna say response, or we'll just call it res equals. This will be our variable for the request. So we'll go ahead and say request right here, just like this. 
and then we're going to say dot get and this is going to call this function right here and it's going to go out to the URL that we put in here and we're going to make the URL an F string so that way we can put in a variable later. We're not putting in any variables here right now but we'll say HTTP slash slash 10 10 11.161 and now to test this API we're going to use one that we know exists as an endpoint and we just want to see what happens. So we're going to say down here that we want to print the response and see what happens. So we can run this and it tells us we get a 200 response, meaning this endpoint is valid. We know we can get this response right here. Let's see if we can pull down the actual data from the response. We want to see the JSON down here in our terminal. So when we look at this, we can see this is the JSON that we want to receive back. And we can come in here and we can say with this module now that we're using this request method, we can come in here and we can say data equals and then we can say res dot the we can say res dot json and now if we print this data it should print out for us the json as well so we can come in here and we can run our code and we can see we have a response it tells us the endpoint is v1 so now if we took this right here and we put this v1 after the api we can say v1 and we can run this and we'll see what we get. We get a different endpoint right here and it says user admin. And so this is how we can use this data from the response in, in receiving this JSON. So we're gonna build this out so that it will continue fuzzing for us. We're gonna delete this V1 because we don't really need that. And we're gonna now see if we can figure out how to get our list piped into our program and we're going to start running it from our terminal over here instead of inside of our Python project. Okay, what I want you to do now is come over to your terminal and I've already changed over to my desktop and you can go wherever you would like to save this but I'm going to go in my desktop and I'm going to make a directory and I'm going to call it Python. You can call yours whatever you want. You can call it API fuzzing or your fuzzer tool or literally anything you want. And then we're going to want to make two files in here. We will want to make a Python file and we can go, we can name it whatever we want. You can make it two different ways. I'll show you two different ways to make it. We can touch and I guess I'll call it fuzz.py. And then we can actually, instead of making a second file, what we're going to do is just grab a word list off of our Linux machine. And so we're going to type in CP to copy. And then we are going to copy our, I think it's in user share word list small.txt. So it'll be just like this. We're going to copy it over to our working directory by putting that period there. And now if we ls this, I put that in the wrong spot. So since I copied it over to my desktop and I don't want it in my desktop, nor do I want fuzz.py in there, I'm going to move the fuzz py and I'm going to move it over into my Python directory. So we'll go home, Kali, desktop, Python, and it should move. And now we'll move over the small.txt as well. And I'm just going to copy this path and move that over. Now if I cd over to this directory, and here are the two files. Our fuzzer right here is actually empty. So I'm gonna just write the, I'm gonna write the code over here in PyCharm because it'll tell us if we have any problems. And then what we'll do is we'll gedit and stick it in this fuzzer right here, our Python script. But I wanna add something to our small text here so that way we don't have to wait for everything to run each time. So I'll gedit our small.txt just like this. And I'm going to add in API right here, and then we'll add in docs right here. Uh, these are actual API endpoints that we're going to be fuzzing on this box from Hack the Box. And I don't want to have to wait for them to get way down inside this file when it is fuzzing. So I'm going to just stick those up at the top so that way we can see what is happening and what the responses are when we hit these endpoints. Now what we're going to do is because we have this sys already imported, now we're going to use it. This is going to take a piped in file into our project here. So what we will do is make a for loop and we're going to say 
for word in, and then we'll say sys.stdin, and then we can move all of this over inside of our for loop. And now we'll change this API right here. We're gonna change that to this word. And now what we'll do is we can copy this right here, and we'll come over to our Python directory. We can gedit the fuzzer. We can paste this in, save, and now we'll run it. And the way you'll run it is like this. You're gonna cat the small.txt, just like this, and then you'll type in main python3, and then we'll type in the fuzz.py, and when we run this, we should start to see some output. Okay, my VPN had disconnected from Hack the Box, so now if we come over here and we run it, we'll start to see a response. And here's what we're looking for. We're looking for this response 200. We have an endpoint of v1, and then we have another response down here that says not authenticated, and it's a 401. So now we need to figure out how to get rid of all of this other stuff because we only want the responses that actually give us back a helpful JSON response from the API request. And this is really gonna be simple. We're gonna use one function and we're gonna use one if else statement and then the code is done and we have created our API fuzzer right here. So what we can do is put this entire thing inside of a function and we can say def loop because that's how I like to name my looping functions. We can just move all of this over and now we need to make an if else statement. So we have this request saved as inside of our response. So we'll just move this down and we can say if the res dot status code, so it's gonna tell us that we're gonna have this, it's gonna give us the status code, which would be right here, the response, this right here. So we're gonna say if this res dot status code equals equals 404, which is what we don't wanna see here, we don't wanna see these 404s, then we're gonna go ahead and pass this if else, cause we don't wanna get down here to the else, and we're just gonna say call the loop again, because we don't wanna see these 404s. And then everything else we wanna print, so we'll say, else if it's not 404 we want to print the data which is going to be equal to the response our res dot json i keep forgetting that i named our response res and then we'll want to print the data so we'll print data now what we can do is just call we can just we could delete that, that wasn't what I wanted to do we can comment all this out and now let's copy this right here and see what happens we want to gedit this. We'll paste that in, save it, cross our fingers, and it says we have, we're missing our colon here, so we can open this back up. And we need to add this colon in. We can save, cross our fingers again, and it stopped. So let's go back over to our code and see what the problem is. Problem is really simple. So I just realized when we call this, it automatically ends because we never call our loop the first time. So what we'll do is call this loop. So loop, just like that. Now it'll call the loop and it will run. I think what else we wanna do is now that we're printing this data, I think we also would like to print the response code so we can see what we're getting out of this response code. And so we can say res.status code and we can print that. And I also think it would be helpful for us to see the word for the API endpoint because we're not just gonna want the data, we're gonna want the actual word that shows us the API endpoint. So we'll print the word. Now, when we copy this, we gotta copy in our call to the function and we put this inside of our fuzzer, I think this time it will work. So we save it, now we pipe that over and it says we have the endpoint, it tells us the endpoint, it tells us what word was the endpoint, and it gives us the response. So this is exactly what we wanted. And you can see this is running because this specific server doesn't have any more endpoints, so we can just cancel this and stop it. So it tells us we have an API further down in the list too. So we have this endpoint. So now if we go API 
and then we type in v1 inside of our browser it'll start moving us on down the line and so you can let this run while you're doing other recon on the project and you have now built your own api fuzzer and you get the response so that way you don't have to go out and check out the every single api endpoint manually because if you remember we type this in we see our api response and without our api fuzzer that we just made the way this would run is you would type in fuff because it is the best api fuzzer out there currently and you run this and it says docs and api but we don't get the response like we do over here see this tells us we have the api we have a 200 and we have the response with this endpoint because sometimes this json may have 10 15 lines and in order to see what it has to say you'd have to come out here and say api enter and then it will tell you but with our fuzzer we made it says api and here's the response so we don't have to come to the browser type in api in order to see these endpoints and with that if you have any comments on what you would like to see next in a python project please let me know in the comments and we will try to get to it